Let's get down to business. All right, so our audio is live. Uh, I forgot to turn on the, the music this time. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it's all good. Yeah. First time tuning into the podcast. Thanks for coming, Engage. Hey, there we are. New layout, too. Oh, yes. New layout. So it shows <laughs> all the Phantom Thieves that Holmesy has unlocked so far. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, mm. cool, cool, cool. I like that. And also, we got a chat log right below Holmesy as well now. Oh, Lordy. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. That's clean. Yeah. Crispy. Crispy. So, um, man, I was looking through the new uh, Streamlabs OBS themes, and the first one that popped up was a Persona one. I'm like, oh, yeah, click. I need that. I need <laughs> that one. And it, and it works well. The, the chat log looks like the phone chat log, so... Oh yeah, yeah. Well, what, if, if you had a look at the start, it just I put a phone on the front, so that's what uh, comes up as a chat log now. And even underneath, right, it shows up like the the phone does, and it yeah, even has cool. the the joining thing in between the usernames, which is really good. You done a good job, man. Thank you, man. Crispy, nice. <laughs> Thank you. It is crisp, crispy, crispy. Oh, I like them crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, hold on a second. I do have to switch back to the uh, starter screen because I got to pull up uh another chrome window there we go i'll go back, back to the live screen here we go all right engage cool. thanks for tuning in by the way good to see you dude. yeah thank you for coming dude really appreciate it all right uh pull up a quick video because this is the one that i want to pull up at the start a quick bibio a quick bibio oh wait bibio bangs uh your event thing covers uh, homes that unlock characters though your, your event thing covers on... Uh, oh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, what event thing? Oh, you mean the uh, the top where it says engage top, follow? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's, right. that's nothing like a tiny bit of use of case head anyway. That's okay. That's 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 minuscule. Teeny weeny. Uh, sorry, I'm just pulling up one important video. Okay. Are you good? Cool, cool. All right, we're good to go. All Ooh. right. All right, fam. Let us do this. Final, sh- final take your heart show of the year. Cool. Oh, my Lord. All right, let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome to episode 9 of Dash and Holmesy Take Your Hearts. I'm one of your hosts, Dash, along with my co-host, Mr. Holmes in 5 himself, Holmesy. Hey, how are you? How I'm, you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling feeling fresh. Got a fresh cut. You got, you can't, if you're on the podcast, feeling you can't fresh. hear You can't see that. You can't hear my haircut if you're on the podcast. <laughs> but um, yeah, nah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm feeling good, man. Good feeling clean and looking clean. Funky fresh and That's ready it. to sesh. I got one done too for you as well. Look at that. Oh, oh baby. Oh, oh, so we're both, we're both nice and clean. Dash is looking sharp. So is Holmesy. Look mm. at that. Sharp boys. Sharp boys. Worried about haircuts on an audio-based <laughs> piece of content. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is starting out great. <laughs> Guys, if you didn't know, this is Dash and Holmes to Take Your Hearts. It's our tri-weekly book club inspired gaming podcast where Holmes and I will dive into Persona 5 currently. Uh, we're, that's what we're currently playing anyway. So uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about, before we jump into the game, what's going to happen very soon next year and everything. So we definitely will talk about that. But don't forget to follow us on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Dash and Holmesy or Dash and uh, Also on iTunes and Spotify, we can give us a cheeky five-star rating. Um, you can also catch us every three weeks over on 8bit.net with our hungry family and Holmesy. We have launched a nice YouTube channel for us. Yeet. Yeet. So, uh, guys, if you head down into the description after this is over, um, or, um, I'll be able to give a link in the chat pretty soon. You'll be able to head to a, our new YouTube channel and subscribe there where we will post the video on demand a week after it airs on Twitch. It will be available still on Twitch right after we air, um, but we would really appreciate your support over on YouTube where we'll be giving you uh, some original content. Uh, Pretty soon, we're going to be covering uh, Persona 5 and Persona 3, the Dancing Endless uh, Night Collection pretty soon. Thanks to our friends over at Five Star Games for actually uh, giving us a review copy of that ahead of time. And myself and Holmesy will be doing a short little podcast on that one once we cover that. And that, Hell yeah. that's actually coming on on New Year's Eve. So make sure you uh, keep your eye out on our iTunes and our SoundCloud and also on the YouTube channel. It will be a New Year's Eve special for you guys to check out. So we can't wait to do that. Gucci gang. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of which, Holmesy, um, before we do jump into the Persona stuff, um, one cool thing that you have uh, coming up next week. Did you want to talk about it here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, I'll, I'll keep keep it brief, but I'm going to be presenting at the Australian Games Awards, so I'm pretty excited for that. I'm yeah. going to be there with a bunch of other content creators. Mm. It's going to be pretty exciting. 
I uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Get to see my fan bam as well for a little bit. So nice. It's gonna be nice. Well, congratulations, Holmes. I'm really proud of you uh, that you actually got that opportunity. So that's awesome, dude. Thanks, man. Get to be part of Dash Gamer Awards too. It's good. Yeah, every <laughs> get the, the toes in all the all the all the waters. <laughs> the illustrious Dash Awards, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, uh, so let, let's actually jump in quickly, Holmesy. Before we do jump into Persona Five, there was a huge announcement last week at the Game Awards regarding Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Mm. Holy crap! Nobody saw this coming. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but Joker has been announced for uh, for Super Smash Brothers DLC. The first DLC pack is Joker from Persona Five, dude. It's huge news. Um, I need to. I need to buy the game back later on. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I can't believe you traded it in. I didn't trade it in. I returned it. Oh, you returned it. it. I got That's even worse. <laughs> no, I, just, I didn't. It's hard to stream. We, we, we won't go into it on. We won't go into it on the pod. But it's hard to stream. But yeah, I, I'm still. I'm stoked to see that they're adding Joker as a playable character. I'm just interested to see what kind of move set he has because obviously he's got like a gun in Persona, and he also yeah. has like you know his magic. Like he's got different spells, all the different magic you can cast, and then your physical attacks. So yeah. I'm curious what kind of like every different character in the game in Smash has a different sort of like style. Yeah. Like I'm just keen to see what he's like in a way. I'd, I'd yeah. be happy to watch someone who's like a pro player dive in and be like pro Joker. I'd be pretty intrigued if the his final Smash isn't um, the all out attack with like basically calls on all the um, oh every team member coming yeah in and they just the ching, 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 yeah. yeah that would have been really awesome. Uh, it's got to be that. Engage says uh, us game awards hype. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Hell yeah. awesome. So um, yeah, so if you have Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, there you go. Big big news, especially for Persona Five being a, a PlayStation exclusive game, and now they're looking to kind of cross over and include other characters from other platforms into the game, which is amazing. So that's awesome news. Um, now, Holmesy, let's actually dive into the game. Yes. yes so, so where are you up to? Um, we've just gone past uh, the 22nd of August. Obviously, we're doing a Persona podcast. Every time I go to say something about like what's just happened, I'm like, spoiler alert. But if you're listening to this, <laughs> I feel like you're past that point. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, we've just found, we've just, we know it's, I've just found out that the 21st was the date of uh, Wakaba passing away through Taba's mum. Um, yep. uh, I guess like quote unquote mm. committing suicide mm. um, in the game. And uh, yeah, we've, we've finished Futaba's palace. I am super proud of myself. I called what it. It was do? Futaba's mom. It yeah. was Futaba's mom. You I did call it. I knew it. And uh, <laughs> I, saw her, I saw her come up. There's like this flying beast thing. And I'm I, like on the couch. And I'm like, Dash isn't here. But if you were here, I'd be on like, I called it. Yeah, you, did call, it. you <laughs> did call it. Uh, last episode, oh. you did basically say that. Yeah. I was so happy when it popped up. I'm just like, I, just, I mean, like. I called it. It wasn't like a spoiler or anything. It's like, obviously, I didn't know that was going to be it, but I was just like, I anticipated this. So it's not a shock, <laughs> but it's still epic. Oh, no, I'm, pr- I'm pretty proud of you that you actually did. Look, honestly, I'm, I'm proud of you how far you've actually come into the game uh, so far. It's been pretty awesome to see how far you've actually come. So let's talk about Futaba's relationship with her mother now, because mm. that, that's basically what has come out of this whole story of the palace. Um, so tell me what you have learned about her relationship with wakaba um so i don't want to butcher this too much she's like no. obviously i've listened to what's going on but like there's there's so much information that you learn like throughout the entire thing mm. um best way i probably summarize it is that um futaba's mum or wakaba was uh very much invested in her work and she was doing a lot of research yep. about like cognitive science mm-hmm. with a p at the start p-s-i-e-n-c yep. that's right um but she's doing a lot of research around all of that um, and because of her time spent working, Futaba didn't get as much time with her mum as any normal kid would usually. Right. Um, uh, I guess like because of all the stuff surrounding that, and like, like we ha- we see a conversation, or not a conversation, we hear about a conversation that um, Wakaba had with Sujiro mm. saying, "I think I might die," and there's all this kind of stuff as well. So like she she was working in a job that i guess she anticipated was going to be a bit risky yeah or dangerous um yeah. i guess like so because of all that she's sort of kept futaba out of all that kind of space like away from her research and then uh because of that i guess like because of her focusing on research more than futaba futaba's perception of her mum was that she was more invested in her research than the relationship with the daughter and right. uh hence why 
her mum was the uh, the boss for the fourth palace. All right. So um, you did call it. The thing was, did you have any doubts that it may have been the mother, or were you thinking it may have been somebody else that was nah. the boss? No, nobody else. You, you're pretty no, confident. No one else. I thought it was going to be. I was invested in. I, I was invested in that, and I was right. But like, I, there was no one else. The only like for maybe like the the only other person it could have possibly been that I saw was her shadow. But then it was like the whole thing is her shadow leading them through the palace and just occasionally being like. Because she shut off, occasionally she was shutting you out and like trying to block you from getting through her palace. Right. Which made sense. But I never, I didn't really see her turning on you. Right. She wanted that. Um, so, yeah, it was only, it, I feel like in my head at least, it always had to be the mum. And it was. <laughs> Is there any characters that you have met so far in the game that you feel um, would have palaces? Like, as in, who, who are we predicting out of the characters you have met so far might have a palace? That's a big question. I've never, you know what? I, I couldn't give you an answer right now because I've never actually thought about that. Mm. I mean, like the, the only people that have like, people, the only people that don't have palaces are the people that have, um, have like personas, people that have like overcome their, um, I can't remember like how they put it. There's a specific way they put it in the game. It was like basically people who have like, so they conquered their demons kind of thing or like they overcome to, diversity. Like, yeah. Overcome, yeah. Yeah. Like they've overcome their adversities and they, they are, know who they are. They are sure of themselves. Like they, Mm. They don't have a palace, so I guess like technically everyone else that's not part of the Phantom Thieves is a palace, right? But um, you're talking about palaces in the game that we're going to dive into, people that we know whose palaces. We yeah, I want I want to know who you oh. think that you might be interacting with soon, or maybe um, uh, like just you know something that's maybe come across and go, they got a palace and I'm going to be beating them soon. A catchy, only because of the last conversation that he had with Sai mm -hmm. um, about making the police or like the. The, the Japanese FBI mm. look like they're incompetent and right. uh, because of like recent events that he can't forgive them. Yeah. So like after that, he had like a real determined look on his face. He'd like spoken in a dramatic tone that you'd never heard before in the game. And so as soon as I heard that, I guess like, and you asking about that, I have a feeling it's going to be that. If I call this too, yeah. I'll be very happy. But um, <laughs> that's the only other person I could think that we're maybe going to see a palace for. Everybody else we have too close a relationship with. Nice. So, so um, the good news about this now is that uh, you you've basically um, just pa have you just passed Futaba's Palace? Is that where you are? Have you have you gone up to the uh, absolvent date? We have, yeah. So we've done like the. <laughs> so I got I got some thoughts about that about the getting to the date, which I'll tell you about. I'm sure you thought the same thing, depending okay. on how long you took to do it. Please go but, ahead. Um, we got there. Like we, uh, I've done that. We've um, she got up and we cleaned a room while she took down Medjed. I didn't expect the twist about her being the original Medjed. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big story changing thing, no. but I thought it was cool that she was the original and other people have just stolen her name and pretended to be that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Mm. I um, the getting to the date though. The one thing I didn't like okay. was um, and I guess for people who finish it very quickly for people who may even be doing like a not necessarily a speed run but people who are um doing like maybe a new game plus and playing it on easy yeah Futaba sleeps as soon as you finish the whole thing so if you finish it with two weeks to spare it's it's got to be humanly impossible to sleep for two weeks straight mm. so she just it, it is you need to eat and drink so it's like we're waiting for her to wake up and mine was four days four or five days i think that she had to sleep and even then it's like you can't sleep for four or five days man that's not it's not normal. I thought it was just kind of it's weird that healthy. she was so tired that she never woke up for five days. Mm. So that that was my only that's my only of all the different ways that they've made there be like a wait to find out what the final thing was. All the other ones made sense. There was a good explanation as to why we're waiting to find out. Like people turning themselves in or confessing and they could do that in their own time. But for Tabas for sleeping, it felt like it was just a little bit of a stretch. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. How quickly did you finish it though? Because like did you have heaps of time? Oh, not really, no. I had about maybe what, like a day or two or like two or yeah, three days? Yeah, because I was on, uh, when I was doing it, I was doing it on the medium difficulty, so I didn't get much time. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because I'm playing on the easiest as well, so I know. I suppose it depends on your difficulty too. I'm I'm probably being, I'm being nitpicky here. It's not like a game-breaking thing. It was the, it's the only thing I've had like a, I guess like a, a gripe with so far in the game. It's like, that doesn't make sense. People can't do that. <laughs> um, What, um, I should ask, what, um, how are your feelings right now towards Sojuro? Like, as in, now that you know everything about Futaba's backstory, what are your feelings towards Sojuro now? Um, 
I mean, like, I like him more than we did before already. Like, I mean, he's 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 been a great dude all the way up until obviously we had like some suspicions when there was um like Sai coming around and like it's like oh and stuff to the government or like he's being like checked in with for like you know things that we don't know much about. But like the fact that he the only thing I was sad about is that he didn't pay any attention to her saying I think I might die. And I was like that's like the only thing he's ever done that's wrong. Well, not wrong, but like you know why didn't you say something, man? But like everything else, he's just he's just been. He's a good dude. I don't have any suspicions about him. I should ask also, like, what the, the good thing is that he came pretty much clean with you guys. Like, after having a conversation with you, you pretty, pretty much came clean and said, look, this is a story about um, Futaba's um, backstory. Hey, hey, Maddie, Thanks for coming, dude. Um, yeah, it's just a case of um, what, what do we expect? What, did you expect anything from Sojiro out of this, like, more, like, he might have been the bad guy in the story or were you pretty confident that he was pretty solid dude i think like early game although the, the conversation never came up at first i was like are they gonna go for the cliche like the good guy ends up being actually the bad guy in the end and he's just like looks like it but i never really i never really suspected him to be like a bad person i still don't mm. um i uh, yeah he he's been yeah he's been i mean he's, he's a little shady i'm sure there's some things that we still don't know about him same as morgana though i have my suspicions about morgana <laughs> mm. i probably shouldn't but i do yeah but, um, it's a bit of an odd one isn't it because he's like a cat person but we don't know who he is and why he is that way and where he came from right but, um yeah i've never suspected Sojiro so so right. as a as a bad boy mm. is still your favorite character Yes. Yeah, still, of course. Yeah. Although, Daddy uh, speaking of favorites, Futaba's Palace is now probably my favorite. Yeah, Again, I told you. Like, yeah. The, not just for like, the, the visuals are great. Like I like the whole yeah. pyramid, like mod, like a modernized pyramid kind of Egyptian sort of theme. Mm-hmm. But also like, I think the story, like her, her journey in like going through her palace and like basically forcing someone's, for, having someone ask you to change their heart and going through with all that. And then the story about her and her mum at the very end. It mm. was um yeah that was a it was a good old good little feels trip right there it was good yeah. I liked that it was a very very well done part of the game and yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of and I like her character too yeah. although I'm gonna change topic briefly here for a quick yeah, second for this it, game is so painfully <coughs> Japanese sometimes I swear to God that's the point. like the whole but like no but like like stereotype Japanese like you know the shit where it's like oh hentai Jap- Japan <laughs> oh man <laughs> made outfits Japan. Don't be, don't like, be racking on hentai, got, man. You've got Ka- Kawa- Kawamaki, and they say Kawasaki there. Yeah. <laughs> you've got Kawamaki in like the maid outfit, like saying all these suggestive sentences while she comes around to clean your house. And then like when Futaba turns into her persona, she gets like abducted by a freaking alien spaceship and wrapped around <laughs> her legs with tentacles. I'm sitting here like, oh fuck, man, it's so cliche. <laughs> yeah. Why? But like that's that's the only yeah. Well, that's yeah, the thing. That that's what it is. I mean, it, they are in Japan, but it's just like it's just that cliche anime meme. Maddie Jerkins in the chat says, "Oh, dude, it's uh, anime as fuck." He also says uh, about Sojiro, he's a rad, gruff dad figure. He definitely he really is. is. Yeah, Daddy Sojiro. <laughs> Where are you going? Why are you going out so late? What are you doing? Come back here, make some coffee. <laughs> he's got your best interests at heart, and that's nice. I like that. Yeah, no, he's he's good. He's he's like a. He's got a very hard shell at the front, but he's all mushy and uh, marshmallowy in the in the in the center, which makes it's it like nice. a picnic. That's it. So yeah, more about the palace. So um, <laughs> he's Sorry, like a like me. Sorry, he's like a picnic. He's just like me. <laughs> he is, Maddie. You are one big picnic. Um, I was gonna say. Um, so back to the palace. What um, Soji Perko. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say was. How how did you like in terms of the design and everything? Was there anything that you found a little bit frustrating, difficult, or like couldn't get your head wrapped around? Maybe some of the fights, the bosses, some of the enemies. Um, the boss fight I had to retry once, which was fine. Um, okay, I kind yeah. of expect that going into it. I usually use that as like my learning experience to figure out like what they're weak to, how to mm. get things done. I liked the whole like I can't remember the, like the giant crossbow thing. I thought that was really cool. Um. I found my way around the palace though quite easily. Like the whole like binary puzzle thing, like mm-hmm. finding those orbs from the Anubis statues. Like I found those pretty easy. Yep. There were a couple of times I couldn't find where to go because there were like different places where the um like there was those crawl spaces you had to go through, like little holes in the wall. Yeah. Some of those were a tiny bit tucked away, but like once I couldn't find a door, like a clear door that said like follow me, um, because yeah. the game, it, it's it's linear, but sometimes it's like super linear. And as soon as it got to a point where I couldn't find where to go. 
my next step was where do I find the crawl space? Like where do I yeah. go? Um, so yeah, I, I found the palace pretty good though. Like the enemies, um, there was only one, I can't remember the name of it, but there was also like an Anubis looking um, like character, like one of the shadows you fight that's holding like the scales. That's yeah. like floating with the, the, the dog head. Yeah. They, they, that was only a little bit annoying because it had no weakness and it was just normal damage for everything and immune yeah. to bless damage. It was like, that's very strong. And it had an insta-kill move. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I never lost Senpai to that. I only <laughs> lost Morgana several times over. <laughs> um, no, fair enough. But yeah, that was the only character or the only shadow that bothered me. But the boss fight was, you know, was pretty fun. It was cruisy. Um, nice. And yeah, I, I found my way through pretty quick. Oh, that's good. Um, speaking of which, um, how have you found, like, speaking of um, Senpai, or we're just going to refer to him now as Joker because I can't keep calling him Senpai. Senpai, Wii. yeah, we'll call him Joker, <laughs> fine. Um, it's, it's talking about Joker's character um, because now you have reached that halfway mark. Like, you have actually gone across that halfway mark. You're about now 60% into the game. I was gonna ask you, what have you like? How do you feel about uh, Joker's? Because you do get like, in terms of your walkthrough of the game, there are some choices you can make of being a dick or being pretty considerate. Um, but there is one clear path for Joker and his character himself. How how are you feeling about the protagonist itself? Because I never really asked you that. No, um, I mean, I like I like the fact that he's kind of like the leader of the group in a way. Like, obviously, I mean, you're the main character in the game, so I feel like you kind of have to do that. But yeah. very recently as well, there's been a lot of things where it's like they force leadership decisions on you. Um, I can't remember what the most recent one was now, just because I, I just I just can't recall exactly what it was. It might have been something to do with talking to Futaba or about Medjet and like you know what do we do? What's next? Um, and like everything, they they all depend on him. And like whenever he says something, everyone else agrees to it. So. Yeah. Um, I like his character though. I think, um, like in, in regards to the way my characters develop with stats, the only thing I'm lowest on is kindness. I still haven't got my kindness is level two. Everything else is three, four, five. Right. Um, but I, I like the role he has in the team. I don't know what he's like. I don't know. Like <clears throat> you don't really know much more about him apart from the story that's been given to you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Yak in the chat says, uh, you have now reached the, Oh, persona five starts now face. <laughs> don't spoil anything for me. Yak. Yeah. Don't say anything. Yak. Yeah. He's only just passed for Tubbs pals. Right, um uh, yeah we've just gone past number four yeah um and Matty just said it's like uh he slipped and fell and became a bad boy and doesn't know how to deal with the image yeah pretty much yeah, yeah that's great right. that's a great way of explaining it yeah i agree um it, it's a case of um uh, just being framed and putting into a position that you have to work with and that's what he's doing he's just it's like it's like going to work and then being put into a job that you just can't like it's like why am i doing this job I, yeah. i've been told to be how did I get shopping. here? <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, the, uh, the choices that you get given in, like, dialogue and stuff, the different ones you get given for responding to characters, um, yeah. I mean, like, some of them are obviously very heavily swayed one way or another for, like, you know, because obviously you can romance, like, Makoto or Ahn. Um, I don't know whether you can romance Futaba at all. Right. Who knows, but we'll find out. Yeah. But, um, like, there's obviously, like, there are some... There are very clearly defined, like, like good answers and nice answers or, like, I'm going to be a fuckwit answers, like... Yeah. There's, I mean, my character's been a good guy. I'm being nice to everybody because I, I, I'd like to think I'm like that in real life anyway. But speaking um, of which, yeah, speaking of which, how is your dating situation with Lady Arn going? Um, so I'm being smart now. I'm not wasting my time and like going to, like when it says my, uh, I'm holding this duck. I don't know why I'm holding this <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm being smart with my time now. So when it says that my confidant rank will not increase any further, I'm spending it on someone else who will. Okay. Um, so romance, like romancing, I think Arn is up to level six now. Right. Um, I knew you'd be into Arn. No, dude. <laughs> so I'm not. That's the thing. It's like, I'm like Arn's character is cool. You cheekish. Goodness <laughs> me. I Arn is cool. I like okay. her character. But the reason I'm romancing Arn for, for, for obviously we'll respond to chat here and answer this. But the reason I'm romancing Arn specifically is because I don't want Morgana to get her. Fuck Morgana. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Arn does something, he's like, "You're so beautiful." Oh my god, man! My cat bits are tingling. It's like, stop it, stop <laughs> oh, it. Man, so that's... I'm just, I'm just romancing on so that Morgana can't have him, and then I'm also <laughs> romancing Makoto at the same time. Oh, uh, you dick! Um, so... I was gonna. What? Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? This is breaking news. We didn't speak about this last time. I only brought it up to you last time that you could. So you are actually going for the double dip, are you? Oh yeah, hell yeah! I oh, said, my... Didn't I say that last time? No, you said that. Oh, you know, maybe. And it was like, okay, yeah, but you knew, you do have that choice. But I mean, you know, I mean, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. What a I, dick! I think, I think um, I need my charm to be level five to be able to go any further with um, Makoto, though. So I'm raising my charm. Keep going to the baths every now and then, you know. 
That's um, all right. Oh, I'm like... I did like three levels of the burger thing now. I'm up to the last burger. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I've like eaten so many burgers, man. God damn. <laughs> my guts are so full. That's good. Um, my, I think, yeah, my, my charm is like level th- four or three now. Um, the, yeah, the lowest thing is kindness is two. But I only needed to get kindness to two so I could start flirting with Arn anyway. That's, that's all I needed it for. Who needs kindness when you've got Arn? Arn Tatamaki. <laughs> boom. Perko in the chat says, just like real life, I need charm level seven to talk to any woman at all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they brought out a uh, beer that's called Charm Level Seven, but yeah, Charm right. Level Seven. <laughs> um, I was gonna say though, uh, like building those stats as well, which is really good. Obviously, you need to unlock most of those stats to actually uh, ask. Yeah, you know, charms mainly for Arn. Um, you're probably gonna have to build a few more for Makoto because Makoto, I actually tried to romance on my first playthrough. Oh, I yeah. didn't romance anybody on my first playthrough. Um, Do a man. Hey, dude, I was still learning, all right? Calm oh, down. Unbelievable. <laughs> my first playthrough, I didn't romance anybody. But I, my second playthrough, I wanted to romance Makoto. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have a certain I didn't have a certain stat that I needed, like at a certain level of stat. And I was like, fuck, are you kidding me? I just played like 70 hours and all I wanted to do was romance. So that's all I wanted to do. Uh-huh. And I couldn't even get there because it's also, it's also a trophy. But uh, like... Oh, okay. I, because I'm trying to platinum this game. This is the only game, like, other than Infamous Second Son, I want the platinum to this game. And I keep talking about it to uh, Dylan from the Explosion Network. I keep saying to him, I want the fucking platinum of this game. So, uh, yeah. You'll uh, get there. I believe in you. Well, I'm doing now, like, a six play for, I think. It's like, this is my sixth one now. I'm, I just started it because I want that platinum. That's but, insane. Um, I think I've done 414 hours now in total. But that doesn't also count my first file. Because I didn't start a new game plus until my second file, which you add another eighty-seven hours on top of that, which is almost five hundred hours. You spent nearly five hundred hours in this game. Oh yeah, God. yeah. Um, actually, speaking of which, do you know how many hours you've spent so far? Fifty-three. That's not bad. I'm like a tenth of what you've done, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's fifty, fifty-three, fifty-two somewhere. Like the, my last save before I had to go out was at like. What did I? Do? I went out. No, I, I yeah, I went out and got a haircut at like two. Yeah, and I was at fifty hours, and I came back around about three thirty, and I played for a bit more. So be like 51, 50, 51, 52 hours. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, Perko, once again, man. When Makoto came out on that bike, I had to stop playing for a while and calm down. <laughs> <laughs> the bike is great. The, the bike, bike is, is very, probably very the best persona. I agree. Arn and Makoto have such different characters, though. Like they're both so different in yeah. the way that they are and the way that they act, and like their just their personalities and their resolves. Well, and, like, it's great. They, yeah. Because it does, it, there's no personality clash after. Because in, no. afterwards, you know, you, you have the different personalities within each of them, which is good. Because you got um, now you have in uh, you have uh, sorry, I'm getting confused here. Arn, Makoto, and Futaba as female characters in the game. And if you look at those characters, if you look at each individual character of the Phantom Thieves, none of them are alike. Nah, you know they're Man, all Ryuji's random. Starting to get on my nerves, but hey, who? Ryuji. Who? Ryuji. Ryuji's starting to get on your nerves. Yeah, he's starting to piss me off. He keeps like... Like, there's different things that keep happening in the game. And like, what was it? We're trying to be... You're trying to approach Futaba in a calm manner so you can get to where you need to be. Yeah. And he starts blowing up and yelling and shit. And then she gets scared and runs away. (laughs) And he does it like several times over. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You are a moron. And he's uh, like, then he goes and like he yells out like who we are in like the restaurant earlier on. Like yells out, man, it's great eating dinner as the Phantom Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shut the fuck up, you idiot. Like I what are you it. doing? It's like uh, I love it. If there, were, if I had a friend like that in real life, I'd smack him so hard. <laughs> not actually, <laughs> violence is not the answer. Violence yeah. against Ryuji. Australia says no. <laughs> but for real, he's so stupid. He's cool. Yeah. Fuck, he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because you know what. Um, it's great. What was it? Uh, oh, man. You know what was the best? was the other night, or oh, sorry, a couple of weeks ago when you were streaming and you were just sitting there and all of a sudden just like somebody spurts out something in the chat and you just go, for real? I'm like, oh my God, this guy. <laughs> it's, he's been playing it so for much real? now. He's picking it up and he's just like sitting there going, for real? And so I had to make that little quick cut. <laughs> oh, you actually got it? Yeah. I, I, that, did you see? Like, I got it. I cut it. I put it on Twitter. Where was this? I tweeted it to you. I am I am I blanking? Did you you clip that, didn't you? I clipped it. I even I chucked it into Vegas and I even put like a Ryuji goes for oh, real. Oh wait, for yes, real, no, 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 I remember now. I do remember now. <laughs> I do remember now, yeah. 
And this guy is sitting there, he's playing, I can't, I think you were playing uh, Pokemon, and you just go, for real? I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I am Ryuji embodied. I don't like that. <laughs> he used to be my favorite character too, man, how times have changed. So speaking of which, also the multiple relationship thing, and the funny thing is on my playthrough, I actually did the same thing by accident. I think mm. I mentioned, I may have mentioned this, but I didn't. I don't think I mentioned what, what happened out of it too. So I actually was button mashing, and I actually accidentally romanced yeah this is how we got across so yeah yeah i did mention this right i took a photo of it i didn't mention this i took a photo of this and i posted it on twitter yeah and i tweeted it out and the first two people that saw this i was like shit i got fuck i made a mistake and then because i didn't want to i wanted to just uh romance makoto but i ended up romancing makoto on Futaba. i'm like oh no triple set yeah and i was like fuck and then all of a sudden um Erica Harlaka, who voices uh, Arn, <laughs> Muggleberries, Cassandra Lee Morris, who voices uh, Morgana, but she's a she's a female, obviously. Um, which I'm lucky enough for them; they actually follow me, which I'm lucky with that. Um, they all tweeted at me like, "Are you serious? How dare you?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, ladies, trust me, it was just a button mashing accident. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that." <laughs> Muggleberries so have gotten. Muggleberry's gotten involved. I'm like, oh no, here we go. I'm in deep shit now. <laughs> Persona Five drama. Yeah, so it was great. Um, let's jump. Let's also talk a little bit about um, Mementos. Have you been grinding it at all? Nah, I. So I realized like, because mm. I wanted to get to the end of the this part at least anyway. But I realized yep. as well like last time we finished up the palace, there was a bunch of downtime afterwards too. Yeah. Um, I think I had about, yeah, I, think I had about five or six days to chill out anyway. So I um. I pretty much spent the time working on my confidants. Mm. So like uh, Yusuke is leveled up now to like level four or five because he had like consistent ones too. Like every single time I'd done one the next day, it was like, level me up, level yeah. me up, level yeah. me up. So I just kept doing like his ones. Um, we just got a new confidant too. Who was that? I guess you got once. a new confidant as well. Um, oh, um, yeah, Kawamaki. So I hadn't done Kawamaki yet. I hadn't done okay. that until just now because it was like, I think I needed a certain level of something to be able to go and like make the phone call. The doctor... No, that's um Kawakami. Hey, Kawakami. I can't remember. Sai... Tai Takemi is the doctor. Takemi, Takemi, that's the doctor. Kawamaki is the maid, the maid outfit chick. Oh, the the teacher. I thought you already. Um... <laughs> I, thought we I have not. About I had not. Ago. No, I got the. I got told to like make a call, and I needed to be a certain level of like charm or guts oh, to call her. Well, and I just never got around to doing it, and then I got a text today, like on the in the game, being like, "Yo, call me. I'll." Naughty Clean maid. fucking apartment. <laughs> like, Naughty okay. maid services, mate. Yeah, and it's just so suggestive. It's so <laughs> yeah. blatantly suggestive. If you're like some naive kid, you have no idea. It's just like, <laughs> master, please come and like, please ask for my services. Like, <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, it gets worse. It's, yeah, so it's like she's talking about like, I can't get involved with my students. Well, it'd be really awkward, but we're not going to do that anyway. So I'll clean your apartment and I'll let you skip skip school. But we're still paying her money. And it's just, I don't even know. It's just fucked up. <laughs> oh, man, it's so bad. Like, seriously, it's one of those things where I think um, the, the Japanese culture out there is just one of those weird ones where we can't comprehend that kind of stuff, but it happens. And I've been there. I've seen, I've been attempt i've someone i've had someone attempt to coax me into a maid cafe and she's like <laughs> how do you say no in japanese like no <laughs> i just put my hand over like ah. but yeah there's like you're walking around like the streets and like there's akihabara around there and like you, yeah. there's just people standing out there with signs it's just like yeah anyone on the pod you can't see what i'm doing but i'm waving my <laughs> hands around at an invisible sign basically it's just like you want you want you hang with maid Oh um, my god, this guy. So yeah, it's uh it's if you say no by running in full speed. <laughs> Mad. But yeah, um, it's uh it's cool. No, that's awesome. Oh well at least you got another confidant to work on, which is good. Raise yes. those stats. Um oh. you know, get get another um uh whatever it is, another rank up on the mask and they have, they hold um so their arcana always the arcanas of co- uh, you know, maxing out those confidants are always great. Yeah. Um especially in the end game. So um that's something to always think about as well. Now, you did mention that um, quickly. We did mention about uh, Memento. So you didn't grind Mementos. Um, so you, have you pretty much gotten to the last part of it? Like, have you actually grown it to its core at the moment? Or have you pretty much, I've, like, 
Oh, the mementos? No, yeah. I haven't gotten to the core of mementos yet. I think. No, no, uh, you, you won't get to the core. Yeah, I'm saying the. Have you got, gotten to the oh. part that you need to? Oh right, no, not yet. Sorry, sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, I haven't gotten. Um, I'm up to. I've done like most of them. I think I've got like three pending ones. Two I need yeah. to investigate more, and then yeah. one of them is ready to go. Mm. Um, so I can clear them. I think I'm. Pre- I think at the moment I'm probably over leveled too, because like way back earlier there was like a level C one that I had to do, yeah. and I nailed that already. And I'm level 33, 30, no, 35 now. Mm. Um, and I have like a level two level C's and a level D one to do still. So I think they're gonna be like a pretty easy kind of clap to go through anyway. Level 35. I think yeah, I'm I'm like the reason that's the other reason I didn't too cuz I um I I feel like I kind of breeze through the boss pretty quickly too, so I feel like I'm almost overleveled. Or well, not overleveled, but I'm, you know, I'm more than equipped. Like all my characters have the best gear, best armor, all that kind of stuff. I've saved up my funds and like bought good stuff for them all. Um so because I comfortably went through that palace, I'm kind of like, well, maybe I'll spend my time on confidants and then my personas and everything will rank up faster and I'll get like better battle tactics mm. and stuff. So I was going to um, ask you as well, like, um, doing that as well, have, have you found that ranking up your personas and actually gaining those new powers that they actually get, um, you've obviously fused the personas as well, trying to take, like, trying to uh, inherit those powers and actually choosing which powers to inherit into your new persona, how have you found, like, trying to choose what power to inherit into your new persona? Because you've got to be careful, because some of these some of this is risky because what if you inherit the wrong power and then head into a new palace and then afterwards um, you're not choosing the right power to use as a weakness towards an enemy you know what I mean yeah it's I, very I'm risky pretty, I'm being pretty smart with it all I guess like my like my phoenix character at the moment is um, like the phoenix character I've got is pr- pretty much a mix of everything um so all of my like my so i've got um like my yeah my phoenix character's got like uh ice i think it's got wind it's got a whole bunch of healing abilities and bless and all this kind of stuff so my the phoenix character i've got is pretty much like my it's like my swiss army knife kind of persona it does like just about everything yeah um and then i've got a couple of other personas i've kept that have like a single attack that's good enough to you know be like that weak the weak damage i can do if i want to like bat and pass or just knock down an enemy yeah um inheriting stuff though i haven't really focused on it too much because i haven't really infused too many of them or like you know sacrificed different ones i did a big session of that last time when i was doing the early palace um or like getting up to this one but since then i haven't really um i haven't really done much of that i i haven't really thought about like the different abilities you can infuse from then right have you thought have you thought about um also maybe when you're actually fusing those personas and stuff have you also thought about like there might be some repercussions of actually trying to fuse them and then like oh shit this persona might actually be the one that i might need to keep to head into this next palace because of some of the enemies that i've encountered so far definitely yeah like i there was the last time i did though like i was lucky because i wanted to keep um i wanted joker to keep the move media for like you know just balanced healing across the whole team and i fused personas um and when i did it i was just hoping by chance that i would keep because i got to keep two abilities from the different ones that went together and one of them just happened to be media i don't know how that's determined though like i don't know how it picks which ones you keep but i saw media and it just came up i was like yes 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 that's exactly what i wanted so i kept it um but i'm sure there's a chance like i feel like it's almost randomly selected i don't really know how you know what abilities you're going to keep but um Mm. yeah i got the ones that i needed um i'm just kind of playing it safe and waiting to a point where there's like a persona i can see that is absolutely useless um that being said now futaba's here and i i have a feeling as well like i, I haven't used her yet obviously because i've just finished the palace but mm. given the whole cognitive science thing and the way that science is spelt i feel like her magic or her element thing is going to be like some the psia psio like that type of damage or like that one instead so i'm trying to be mindful of my party and who to tag in and out so i can get that type of damage on too mm yeah no that's actually pretty smart to actually consider as well um uh, let's talk a little bit about uh futaba's character because we actually haven't actually we really haven't actually covered that too much so no. what what have you gathered about futaba's character herself because obviously she's the shut-in she's a very nerdy character what what have you what have you kind of gathered about futaba um yeah she's very shy um mm-hmm. she's a lot of what we saw was in, in the start, she wasn't very confident in herself or confident no. in like, I guess herself. She was, she was able to do quite a lot. And you see like all the books that she's reading, she's like obviously reading some really technical and smart stuff. Right. So we know that she's smart. She's switched on, but she just doesn't, I guess at the time, doesn't really believe in herself too much. Yeah. Now, after we've done what we've done, like when we're sitting down and trying to get to Noah and it's like, how did you, how did you become MedJet or whatever? And it's just like, oh, secret. Like how, what do you, what, how, 
how have you learned so much stuff like oh private you know she just doesn't tell you anything about herself so she's not secretive but she just doesn't want to like share much about herself she's just she stays very closed off all the time yeah um i don't really know really too much more about her apart from the fact that she's just very shy she just kind of like keeps to herself the it hasn't, hasn't really been much time to learn much about her though mm. um but i'm interested to see how she fits in i'm always wondering whether like now i'm thinking about this we've got six people in our party whether there's going to be like it's almost like snow white and the seven dwarves kind of thing like whether there's you've actually be, like, got seven there is, yeah, there's, there's like different, I feel like each character now I'm thinking about it is going to be a different type of personality or a different like trait. Yeah. So I'm interested to find out and like sit down and maybe look at who each one is portrayed as and see whether there is like a, as all like there's the whole seven deadly sins thing, whether they're like seven different types of personalities, like yeah. happy, sleepy, grumpy, all that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I agree. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Speaking of seven. Let's talk a little bit about the seven deadly sins because we haven't covered that in a couple of weeks. Or I can a answer your weeks. question that you're probably going to ask me or again because I I know we do it every time. I don't know anymore. I still haven't figured anything more out about it. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> let's um. I want to scale it back because I actually know which ones are what now. So apparently, um, they oh, actually no, I won't give it away how I know, but um who do you think like let's go back i want to go back on this list do you remember um so we we covered them back on the second episode uh or sorry the third episode i should say um do you remember um so for example we know that karma sheet is lost that's no let's let that let's just put that out there we know that karma sheet is lost so come uh it goes um uh greed wrath uh gluttony lust uh pride sloth and envy Sorry, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so um, out of those that I've read, do who would you match Futaba with? Uh, Sloth. Sloth. Because it okay. even says in the dialogue too, mm. like after you finish it, um, there was, uh, I think it was the, call, uh, the calling card we left. Right. We leave the calling card for her and it says you've committed the, the sin of, of Sloth. Sloth. And let's sit around. It's like, as soon as that came up, it's like, oh, okay, well, she's that's what she is then because yeah. she just vegetates in her room all the time. So, so would you say that Fataba was the one who was um okay so that's actually a good question now because sorry it, well this is a good question the sloth part would uh, ascertain to Fataba but would it be Fataba that you we were talking about or the mother because she's the, the boss of the palace um I would uh, say uh, I mean because she no I'd say it's Fataba because the mother was not actually the um i guess like she wasn't part of the palace per se that was just something that was created by her cognition she's mm-hmm. not actually technically there in the palace per se it's just something that she's conjured up in her mind of like her perception of what her mum was or how she thought of her right so i think sloth is about futaba okay fair enough that's an interesting one yeah why do you do you think the opposite or well i'm i know them now because i'm reading the list um, oh okay i can say who's who's what and um yeah, let's not do that. Let's do this on the last episode. Let's talk about it on the last episode of What's What, I reckon. Okay. Yeah, so you said that Fataba might be sloth. We both, we both said that um, Kamashita, Kamashita was, was lost. lost. We, we thought that, yeah, yeah. I yeah, still yeah. believe that. Greed was um, Matarame. Um, Gluttony was kind of Shiro. Yep. Um, That's it. That's the yeah. four we've done so far. I don't know. Yeah. I, I know, like, I know the name of the next person. Like, the next one was um, Okamura. Akumara, yeah. Akumara, yeah. We've got yeah. him coming up next. So mm. I didn't see much of like the picture of him though. Like I don't. There's obviously a connection there because like when Sai is talking about him, he's like, "Oh, this is someone like you definitely know." Like you're kind of like alluding to the fact that we've had, you know, cross paths with him before. Yeah. Um, I can't recall where we might have seen him or what I should know him from, but um, mm. I'm I'm keen to find out. <laughs> mm. No, fair enough. No, that's good. Um, let's talk about your social stats. Do you know them? Social stats, social stats, social stats. Uh, wait, are you talking about like the five guts, proficiency, charm, kindness? Oh, and knowledge? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Where knowledge is. I'm pretty sure knowledge is five now. So you've maxed out on your knowledge. I think so. Or I'm nearly. I'm oh. close. I, I'm. I know I'm at least at four, maybe at five for that. Mm. Charm is three. Guts is four. Mm. Yeah, guts is four. Mm. Um, kindness is two. Mm. And what was the other one again? I've done. Yeah, um, sorry, guts, proficiency, proficiency, charm, profi- proficiency. Profi- yeah. proficiency is three. Sweet. So you've obviously been trying to swing some bats. 
I might, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been mindful <laughs> yeah. of all that. So I've, um, I mean, proficiency, I think it's also when you craft your um, the tools as well. Yep. So I've been doing that a little bit nice. as well. So yeah, no, it's good. Lockpicks and everything as well. Yeah. I've been, I've got like 15 of those sitting around at the moment because the amount of, wow. the amount of like things I went past in the old like places, I'm just like, I need a lockpick. And now I'm just like, all right, <laughs> that's it. Never not going to have one. Make a nice. lockpick every time. Nice. So, uh, very good. Yeah, uh, they do come in. They definitely do come in handy. There's a lot of points in the game where you need them. I've noticed as well that the chests that you do lock pick generally give you something quite rare. Like there's yeah. been times where I've gone to buy the best gear from the airsoft shop and I've already yeah. got one of those pieces of gear on my character, like whoever yeah. it might be for. Yeah. Because I found it from a chest. Right. And that's like a 20. Right now they're worth like 20, 25K in you know currency in the game. So you can save yeah. all that by crafting a lock pick. Yes. It's one less character you have to buy for. You can spend your money. Like, you can manage everything else so much easier by like having, like, that extra money to spend. Yeah. It's good. No, it is really good. Um, Let's also talk a little bit about... Um, So, this because this is the last episode of the year, I wanted to bring this up. What have you... Um, So, we you started this back in April. You started this back in April. Mm. Or May, I believe. Yep. Um, Playing a game this long, um, up until a point... It's the end of the year, and you're about sixty percent into the game now. We we talked about this when we first started the podcast. That one of your concerns was how lengthy the game actually is. Yeah. And um, traditionally, this is not something that you would usually play with a story this long. It's something that you would kind of uh, gloss over because oh, I wouldn't have the time to do that. Plus, you have your Twitch streams that you actually take care of as well. With um, like you you generally play games like Destiny. Um, other third person uh, type games uh, that only last about maybe 10 to 15 hours long. Yeah. How has the experience been now playing something like this? Um, you know, a JRPG uh, that's almost 100 hours long um, and has different kind, kind of styles of gaming mechanics that you're not generally used to um, in terms of like the freedom of having to leap on buildings and everything else. How, how is your feeling now towards something like this? Are you a little bit more open to something like this or is it something that you, you know, um, I feel like this is almost like a diamond in the uh, diamond in the rough kind of thing. Like I don't know many other story, uh, many other games, sorry, story based games like this. Yeah, that I'd be willing to pick up. I generally yeah. trust your judgment with most games like this. Like you know, yeah. I, um, I yeah, I'm I'm glad that I've started playing it. But I would probably, I think like we we talk about our pod being like a book a book club inspired mm-hmm. gaming podcast about Persona mm-hmm. Five. But I would definitely. This, this, this game is akin to like a book like I, I i don't really read at all i've tried to i think the most recently yeah. i tried to read world war z because ruby loaned the book to me right um i gave it a go and i couldn't sit down and focus like i need visual stimulation i just can't like i don't know i need to look at something yeah um but like this is definitely the kind of game that i can like pick up and put down and just play casually over a long period of time and if i'm invested in the story and like i, I am right now definitely um, it's the kind of game that I could just pick up, put down, play casually over a long period of time, and then get to the end of the year and be like, "Holy shit, what an experience!" So yeah, I um I want to try. I know we've spaced this out over like April, May anyway, but um like uh, I know with Kingdom Hearts coming up as well, I'm gonna see if I can maybe maybe get it done closer to the 29th of January <laughs> so that we're ready and not doing two pods at the same time. But um yeah, yeah it'll be I guess we'll have a little bit more of a push over the next month and a half but it's yeah. been yeah it's been a good time i'm glad that i played this game it's been a lot Holmes is a busy boy Holmes is a busy boy <laughs> everywhere yeah. and anywhere that's it right um also speaking of which um we will be covering kingdom hearts in january for mm. everybody out there we'll talk about that in a little bit as well um now uh up until this point in terms of the game also the bosses that you have battled and everything else in terms of their stories and everything what which boss would you have considered probably like in terms of storyline and everything your favorite story to go through so far favorite story um still i mean i even though i anticipated futabas i think her story was still the coolest like i felt um i I liked the connection with her character the most out of everybody's all the other ones were you know stuff like on behalf of another character or like trying to do justice for someone else so like this time it was being requested to go in it's like it's the most different palace we've done being asked to go in and take someone's heart voluntarily yep haven't seen anything like that before no um and i think it's i think this was best for like a little twist at the end like what you guess like two twists about her being medjed and her mum being the boss yeah um but just like also the story and the connection you kind of develop with her character and um this game 
I still, I'm gonna every time it comes up, I'm still gonna say it. There's a lot of things I repeat on this podcast, but it's for That's a okay. great, it's for a great okay. reason. Yeah. The like the touch on the stories of like a lot of things around like mental health and suicide and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this game does it exceptionally well. Like I mean, they really do. Generally, like, any game that's going to do it, they're not going to take a risk unless they know they're doing it well. So, like, that's fair enough. But they do it so well. Like, it's yeah. just, it's, yeah. And they've done a really, really good job. It is really well done. Like, just, schmick. Yeah, just talking about it the right way. Like, just portraying a message. And it's, yeah, I think it's been it's been a good journey so far. That's good. Holmesy, um, one last thing. Mm. Oh, thanks, uh, Ice94 for the follow. <laughs> uh, that's a... Uh... <laughs> ice well, 94 there you go anyway yeah um Holmesy um <laughs> oh my god that's very very funny yeah yeah <laughs> did you 94? not see that at first no I, I, I was like nice <laughs> I'm so sorry that's okay that's oh right. man Sorry, keep going. It's okay. Ice underscore. Um, I was gonna say. So, uh, Holmesy, in terms of um, the story and everything else, like um, I can't remember what I was gonna ask now because I just got sidetracked by I'm that so whole. Sorry, that's all right. No, no. What I was, what I was gonna ask you though was, so far of actually playing the game and everything else, um, have you been satisfied? Is it something that you've turned around and said to yourself, maybe I should put this game down now? Not yet, no. No, no, it's, no. Um, okay, it's good. It's been, yeah, I think I've gone, like, Kamashita was the hardest part. Just leave it yeah. We're done. <laughs> we're, we're, part, we're over the hill now. It's all yeah. it's all downhill. In, like, it's just a downhill. A good so way. We're snowballing in the best way. Yeah. It's all, it's all downhill in a positive way. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad to be hearing that. Uh, that's all right then. And um, the the ver- uh, that was the question I was going to ask. Do you know what's happening? I ask it every time. So, yeah, my theory... My, yes. this, this is only a very tiny theory. This is going to like scratch the surface of everything. This is what I think is going on so far, or like what's coming up. But yep. um, we keep hearing about this metaverse user, this person who is using the space for their own, like, you know, they're using it for their own benefit. And there's obviously other people having cognitive changes, people being, like, people being incredibly violent or like just entirely changing for no reason. Yep. Um, my theory with the recent events is that the metaverse user who we're seeing right now is the person who convinced wakaba like it changed wakaba's cognition to kill yeah. herself um and is actually the person who stole wakaba's research and is now using all of her research to manipulate everything in the metaverse to their own benefit right so i think that's who the per- this mysterious figure that we don't know anything about i think is the person who quote unquote killed like convinced wakaba that she needed to end her life because she obviously jumped in front of a car at the time mm. like you know someone who's happy with their daughter you don't jump in front of your car for no reason, right? No, front, jump in front not. of a car for no reason. So I think, yeah, my, that to we'll summarize it as that. Metaverse user is the person who changed Wakaba's cognition to kill herself, stole mm. Wakaba's research for all the cognitive science stuff, and is now using all the research that she's done to his advantage to make the metaverse work the way that he wants it to. Yeah. So that's my theory. That's the, it's only a scratch in the surface. We don't know much about like the rest of the story, but that's mm. who I think that is so far. But we'll find out. If I predict that, then i win we'll see we will find out <laughs> all right so yeah that's an, that's an interesting theory all right anyway um Holmesy, that's it for this year god damn yeah that's uh it's been it's gone fast i know it's right been, it's been a very quick uh every three weeks we've months. been doing it yeah almost uh, a month once a month but every three weeks we've been doing it now we're, we're at the end of the year and this is the last episode of the year we haven't finished yet though and so this is going to be an interesting ride to actually get it done before kingdom <laughs> if we, you know well i was gonna say like oh i will do my best but we'll see if i can uh if i can smash out uh a single palace and we do it like every two weeks or something like like one one palace every two weeks we should be done in time for that'd be kingdom pretty hearts. much right in the money for kingdom hearts so we'll see we we'll will see, see about that yeah. won't speak won't, won't lock anything in yet eddie but uh no. we will see no no but but we won't guarantee anything but we'll definitely see. we are definitely going to come back though next year guys so our plans for next year um will be that we will be covering um the rest of persona um and then um we will be moving into kingdom hearts um because and home's easy you know really really excited about it i'm very excited 
uh, can tell. Um, but yeah, so uh, Dash and Homesy Take Your Hearts should wrap up by the end of January, and we'll be jumping into Kingdom Hearts, which will be Dash and Homesy's Open Your Hearts, uh-huh. uh, which we'll cover um, next year as well in the in a in a very similar format. But the only difference will be is that we're both going to be playing it at the same time. Um, so we're both going to be playing it and being like, "Oh my god!" And you know, we'll have the we'll have different reactions or the same reactions and whatever. So it'll definitely interesting when we play them i hope you um, know i'm gonna leave you in the dust with this game i'm gonna like i'm playing the shit out of this game and i'll, I'll finish it miles <laughs> before you <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> you never know maybe i'll play it before you have you done number two yet have you finished kingdom hearts uh, 2 no i haven't yet what are you doing man man I'm, hey 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 anyway so <laughs> <laughs> um guys that'll be our plans for next year also a couple things from myself and homesy maybe out of the blue or something but you know what the It'll be an interesting year in 2019 for for us as well. So we're definitely excited to jump into doing some more podcasting for you guys in 2019. But guys, this has been Dash and Homesy. Take your hearts for 2018. Be sure to catch Homesy on Twitter and Twitch by his username, Homes in 5 Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dash Gamers. Be sure to follow us on uh, SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Dash and Homesy and iTunes and Spotify where you can give us a cheeky five-star rating. Also, big thanks to 8-Bit and Audio Technica this year for uh, helping us and sponsoring us this year with the headsets and the mics. Big, big help. Uh, so thank you so much. And you can find us every three weeks over on 8bit.net with our hungry family. Uh, you can also catch myself and Buddy Watson over on Dash Culture. We'll have a Dash Culture special as well as a Dash and Homesy special up on New Year's Eve for you guys to enjoy for your ear biscuits. Um, that should be definite, definitely interesting. Um, on New Year's Eve as well, what it is is myself and Homesy are going to be playing Persona 3 and Persona 5, the Dancing Endless Night Collection. Um, and then we're going to be doing a short little podcast on that one, our quick thoughts and review. Um, and also, we have an, a YouTube channel, if you didn't know that. Um, you can see the description below here on Twitch. Also on SoundCloud, where you can click that link. It'll take you right there. Give us a subscribe because it'll definitely help us out. It'll definitely help us get a, a, a username on that channel if we can yes. hit 100 subs. Yeah. Definitely need to get there so we can get a nice username going on there so I don't have to keep saying that. But um, <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, that has been Dash and Homesy for 2018. So from myself and Homesy, have a happy new year and we'll see you in 2019, guys. So until then, much love. Stay hungry. And that is it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I'll stop it. Beautiful. God damn, boy. Beautiful. And thanks to everybody who came into the chat tonight. Really appreciate you. From Jerko to uh, engage the plan to uh, thanks, Duddles93 for the... For the, hey uh, Duddles, hell yeah! Duddles is a friend of mine from Sydney. Nice, thank you he's very a, much he's, for the he's follow. A good man of mine. Thanks, man. Appreciate much, it. Much appreciated for the follow, dude. Um, and also Aussie Yak and uh, Duddles and the other guy there, the Ice underscore whatever your name is. I think that's just a spam account. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. I'm so sorry. I laughed so lot. like for so long, dude. That was very funny, though. That's all right. That's all right. Is that your first experience with that username? No. You had that username come up before? No. That's that's the that's, that's the first, the first time. time. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm so glad I was there for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming tonight. I'm gonna let Holmesy go because he's probably gonna be streaming tonight, aren't you? I am. Yeah. There, there we go. So, guys, um, until next year, we thank you so much for joining us, and we'll definitely see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Shut up, shut
Don't take off my 